Hey everyone! So I'm back today with another audio recording for you. Hey, you said you wanted a podcast. Here it is. It's more of a tube cast, but whatever, it works. So today I have something huge to share with you. I think I'm going to call this episode of the tube cast, Women Have a Major Productivity Problem. That's what we're going to talk about, and it's going to be an intense conversation that was spurred by a post that I made on Instagram the other day. Now, if you don't follow me on Instagram, what are you doing? Grab your phone, open Instagram, search for Miss Trenchcoat, and follow me, okay? And give this episode a like and subscribe to my channel because I've got a lot of new content coming out, and I guarantee some of the conversations that we're going to have on the topic of productivity and planning are going to be life-changing. No joke. This is seriously deep and insightful content that you really don't want to miss if you're a woman who is working your butt off to manifest your dream life, whatever that dream may be. Okay, so back to the topic. I posted this meme or whatever you want to call it on my Instagram that I had seen over and over on social media in like the last couple of days and weeks. I'll throw it up on the screen for you guys to see so you can check it out. It was, I guess, originally a Twitter post that was from some random woman named Dana Schwartz. She has a check mark next to her name. Maybe she's someone famous or notable. I don't know who she is, but I'll go check her out later. The post reads, every woman in my life juggling three jobs, does yoga, cooks, goes to therapy, remembers everyone's birthday. Then it says, their boyfriends. Once almost made a dinner reservation, but it turns out the place was closed. It's funny. I thought it was funny the first time I read it, but then I became immediately disgruntled because it was yet another thing out there in the world glorifying women being busy bees while the expectation is that men don't have to do or don't need to do as much as women do. So I posted the image along with my commentary, which I'll also read for you now. It says, I keep seeing this image pop up online, and I know it's meant to be empowering for women, but to me, it points out a very significant problem our society has with expectations specifically for women. I believe that women have a major productivity problem. We set high expectations for ourselves. We take on too much. We don't ask for help. We do it all. We think we're failing when we literally can't do it all, and the imbalance results in tremendous stress, anxiety, and dis-ease. This is a problem I'm committed to reversing through my example and my business. I am living proof that success doesn't have to come at tremendous expense or effort. Investing your energy into too many places at one time doesn't earn you more reward. It prolongs and makes it more difficult to make progress. I understand that some of us are in situations in our lives where hard work is required, period. But I also know that most women are keeping too much on their plate when they have other options. I encourage you to evaluate your life, your goals, and your commitments and ask yourself to find a place where you are investing energy that doesn't serve your highest good. If you take a moment to do a gut check, I know you can find a solution for removing this obligation or expectation. You just need to believe that there is a better way and there really truly is. So that's the end of my commentary for that. Now, this post actually did really well on my Instagram. I was shocked and it got a lot of comments. But as I read through the comments, it became clear that although many of my followers understood and agreed with the message, there were some people who were missing the point. Now, I don't think everyone needs to agree with me on the point. You cannot agree with me, and that's fine. But many of the comments were focusing on how women should and shouldn't act within a relationship or thought the post was just bashing men. The point I was trying to make had nothing to do with relationships. It had nothing to do with men. The point I was trying to make was that women take on a lot, either because of societal expectations or their own expectations, and most of them still feel like they aren't doing enough or they feel like they're a failure. The woman in the post clearly has a very full life, is very capable and competent. Women in today's society overall are the ones who are doing more of the things that we consider successful. For example, more women pursue higher education now. More women are the breadwinners in their families now. And again, not knocking men, these are just facts, statistics. But the question for me remains, if women are so successful, why don't they feel it? 
Why aren't they taking better care of themselves? Why is heart disease and heart attacks still the number one cause of death for women when we live in a society that talks to men all day long about their heart health and what a signs of a heart attack are, but women get heart attacks and die from them at the same rate that men do, but our symptoms are different aren't often discussed on ads on TV. And because we put other people first so much, we don't take ourselves to the hospital when we feel bad because we don't want to inconvenience anyone. Now, this discussion goes beyond heart attacks, but I think that it's a beautiful example to illustrate my frustration with the expectations of women in our society. Women are taking on a lot. We are more productive, more capable, and more competent than ever, and yet we don't feel successful. We often feel like we need to people please or we need to do more. We need to take on more responsibility, and this overdoing it can easily lead to overwhelm, stress, and a plethora of other issues. So for me, that post was intended to spark the question of why. Why are we doing these things when, and here is where the example of the man comes in, simply to juxtapose the situation. Why do we take on all of this when our male counterparts aren't always as eager to take on so much? Like, why do we feel we need to prove something because we have nothing to prove to anyone? Now, I have a lot of thoughts on why this happens. I do believe part of the reason why women do take on so much in a societal or community context is because that we are built for that work. Not built through societal expectation necessarily, but through our physical wiring because men and women are different inside. We have different parts. We develop differently physiologically due to our hormones because those are different between men and women. So when people say men and women are equal, I think, well, yeah, like, Under the context of the law, we're equal, but not in a societal context. If you put 100 people on a desert island and 99 were men and one was a woman, in a year, you would have 101 people on that island. But if you put 99 women and one man, you might expect 199 people after a year. So to humanity, to society, women are more important, but historically, that importance has been manipulated. A quick example of this that I'll take from history a sultan would have a harem of wives. And the more wives he had, the more powerful he was because he could father many, many children. And those children were assets for his dynasty. So in possessing many women, he had access to great power because women have such a high value to society. But in return, these women were locked away from the world, right? Yes, they lived in beautiful palaces. And yes, that sultan in keeping them safe and secure was fulfilling his societal obligations to the women, but they were arguably prisoners of his. Now, things like this happen today, but thanks to advances in science, it's less likely that a male ruler will hide away his wife or wives. It's been said that the greatest fear of any king is that his son and heir is not his own, which is historically why many societies, and some still around today, are what we call matrilineal and patriarchal. Matrilineal meaning that power is passed through the mother or female line, but patriarchal because men control the power. When I think about a modern system like this, I often think of Judaism, which is an ancient culture that has survived to modern times. Yes, it's a religion, but it's also an ethnicity. In Judaism, you inherit your Jewishness from your mother, but Judaism as a religion gives men more control over power. A non-modern example of this would be ancient Egyptians. Again, they were matrilineal, meaning a king received his right to rule through his mother's line. Why? Because there weren't ancient paternity tests, right? So they knew whose uterus you came from, but they can't for certain determine who fathered you. But again, we don't have that issue today because thank you, science. And also, most of the world isn't ruled by dynastic royalty. But these traditions do still play out in the way women are viewed and controlled today because societally, we are still more valuable. And if you're hearing this and misunderstanding my point and think I hate men or that men are inferior or that I'm attacking men, I'm not. It's facts and science, people. Men and women each have a role in society, but if a virus struck the world tomorrow and all the ladies were suddenly gone, bye-bye humanity on Earth. I doubt that would happen in the reverse. I think science could help women repopulate the Earth and bring men back, but I think barring a scientific breakthrough where men are able to use 
I don't know, maybe like female animals to gestate humans, which I don't even know if that's possible, the chances are lower for humanity's survival. And holy moly, we are in trouble, ladies, if that day ever does come. So women are more valuable to society. And if there is any question of that, look at the Kardashian Jenners. Why do you think they're so popular and powerful to society in the U.S.? Because they are a harem of beautiful and business savvy women led by a woman. They are matrilineal and matriarchal. You can see that play out because you know you hear about every single one of those Kardashian babies, except for the one who is actually a Kardashian. Rob's daughter, Dream. Now, I'm a Kardashian fan, so I know that you don't see that little girl as much as you do every single one of the other babies because their mama isn't a Kardashian. She's not part of that harem. And I say this all half-jokingly, of course. Yes, part of this is a joke, but part of this is a serious societal commentary as well. So let's jump back to the main point of this diatribe that I'm on, which is that, well, if women are so inherently important to society, why then do they feel that they have to prove something? Why are they trying so hard to do it all and be it all and working themselves to death in the process? Now, honestly, I feel like this is a trap that has been set for women in our modern era. Okay, ladies, you want equal rights? You want to work? You want to have a say in government? Well, now you get to do it all. And you will have the babies and raise them and go to college and have a career and run your household. And there is a bet that's being made with all this that by setting these high expectations, women will be so busy doing it all that they tire out and end up focusing on their families as opposed to worrying about power. There are reasons why most politicians in the U.S. are old men. Number one, because most people pursue political work like this at an older age. Yes, politicians are getting younger, but most people who run for office are still like 40 plus. That's not a bad thing. I think having life experience is great and essential for doing the important work of running the government. But for women, once they get to their 40s and their 50s, their children are raised and they are prepping for retirement. They are too exhausted from doing it all to pursue more work. Yes, some of them do have the time and energy for it, but not most of them. That's why it's mostly men. Men who have played their roles in society, going to work, earning a living, providing for their family, and being active in their communities. But men whose bodies haven't gone through the trauma of childbirth over and over. Men who haven't historically been the primary caregivers to children and grandchildren. Men who haven't been conditioned for decades to prioritize their family over success. Instead, men have been conditioned for decades that their success is crucial for their family. Don't get me wrong. I know that I'm not talking about all men or all women here, and there are countless other one-off scenarios that aren't accounted for either. But the progression of society isn't affected by one-offs. It's affected by the attitudes and actions of a majority. And until more of us see this situation for what it is and take action to change it, nothing changes. To borrow a phrase from Game of Thrones, this is the wheel that needs to be broken. Women need to see their value to society and set boundaries on expectations to protect their energy and their lives. It doesn't mean they stop having children or stop pursuing education or stop working. It just means they set new expectations for themselves and support other women who are also setting new expectations. This is how the wheel is broken. This is how we actually change the world. I realize this conversation has many other implications for women in society and government and current events. I could literally keep going for several hours, but my channel is about productivity and manifesting the life of your dreams, so I'll spare you the rest. For now, ladies, I want you to clearly understand me when I say that you are the most important person in the world. Each of you are. Without you, none of this is possible, and you possess a power that can bring all of mankind to its knees. You are not small. You are not weak. You are not insignificant. You are a powerful, creative force. You can have anything you dream of. There is not a single person on this earth that can take that from you. So don't give your precious power and energy away. Lean into it. Set boundaries. Treat yourself the way you deserve to be treated. And please, 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 above all, take care of yourself because when you are taken care of, the world is taken care of. Okay, that's all for now.
like, subscribe, share, all the things. Tell me what you think in the comments. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye!